Welcome back up in the gear loft, taking a little break from the gear den. Today we are going to talk about my Z-Pax duplex setup, talk about some initial first impressions, what I like, what I don't like, and we'll go through my entire tent setup I'll be using for the rest of this year when I'm in a tent. Okay, quick sidebar. So if you follow us on Instagram, and you should, you'll get a lot of these cool behind the scenes thing, but I've talked a, li a little bit about it there. Basically this October, um, I will have done my third marathon in 12 months. That's a lot of running. Long, 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 long story short, the combination of high volume running uh, and sleeping in a hammock uh, is kind of screwing with my lower legs a little bit. Uh, I went and saw a sports med physician about it. It's a long story, but to summarize it for you, no, I'm not done sleeping in hammocks. In fact, the last time I was out in the woods three weeks ago, I slept in a hammock. Um, but certainly on these long, arduous, multi-night treks, I'm probably gonna stick to a tent for at least the rest of this year uh, until the running volume goes down after this next marathon and hopefully that clears up some of my leg issues. But uh, yeah, it took me a while to figure it out and we did a bunch of testing, but yeah, something about sleeping in a hammock and running a ton is causing issues with some of my lower leg muscles. Okay, here's the deal with the duplex specifically. So a couple months ago when I was searching for tents to take on the Pictured Rocks trip, I knew I wanted to be in a tent for that trip. Andy has a one person tent, the Gossamer Gear, the one. It was a little too tiny and pain in the butt for me to take. So I just started contacting tent manufacturers. And uh, literally I just sent a bunch of emails out and I was like, hey, uh, I'd, li I'd like a tent to borrow, not to have. Uh, you can send me whatever you want. I'll pay for shipping, I'll pay to rent it, whatever. Uh, and bless their hearts, z -Pax got back to me and was like, we'll send you a used duplex, no questions asked, and I promised nothing, and about a week later I had a duplex. Uh, so that was pretty sweet. Big shout out to z -Pax for that. Uh, I, I did not ask for a duplex, <laughs> I just asked for a tent, and I got the duplex. So that's how we're in the duplex. Quick first impressions. Very, very very impressed with it. I, I honestly like, I was like, oh, duplex, I don't wanna be on the duplex train. Everyone's on the duplex train, but it's a sweet tent. It's, uh, it's very light. It's about 20 ounces, a little bit south of that. The duplex is so easy to set up. I mean, it is so easy. It is one trekking pole, a second trekking pole, stake out and you're done. And it really does stay up. It's easy to pitch. Andy and I set up and even Andy was like, wow, this is so easy to set up. Third first impression, it's huge for a two person tent. You know, the, the general rule of thumb is like a, a one person tent is really a zero person tent <laughs> and a two person tent is really a one person tent. And I've always found that to be the case. I will say with the duplex and I've put two sleeping pads in there, you could, in theory, put two people in there and you could actually be comfortable. It's a big tent. Now, I don't think I'd ever actually do that. I'd only put two people in there if I had to. Uh, I'm never planning on putting another person in there with me, but it is a big tent. I mean, it's kind of weird coming from a hammock. Like I can bring all my gear inside the tent with me and the sleeping pad, spread it all out, go through it. It's very roomy on the inside. And then in addition to that, it's got vestibules on both sides of it. Um, which you can completely open. So you have a ton of vestibule storage space too. And then my fourth first impression <laughs> is great airflow. I was not expecting that. I was not looking forward to being in a stanky tent that didn't breathe, but because with the duplex, you can completely open both sides of it. You just, you get airflow going right through it. So I was very happy about that. You know, we were in Michigan, some nights it was really hot, but the breeze would come right through that tent and you could just feel the air on you. And it was really nice. Lastly, kind of my last first impression is, I, I know I said, just send me a tent, like send me a used tent. So they sent me, at least from the email, I forget the nomenclature for it, but what their, you know, used tent is. And it, it seemed brand new. So I know you can go on those website on their websites. I think you can you can buy their, I think they call them their bargain tents. And this thing showed up and literally looked brand new. So I don't know if they just sent me a brand new one, but said it was a used one, or more likely they probably had a used one that got sent back that had an incredibly minor defect with it and they fixed it and sent me that one. But if you are looking at their website, it's worth checking out their used tents because the one I got was effectively brand new. 
Uh, so that was awesome. They also sent me the pull mod, didn't ask for that. Uh, and my first impressions on that are, so the poles themselves weigh about 11 ounces. So that's pretty, that's a lot. It's not a non-significant amount of weight. And I'm usually always taking my trekking poles. So I don't know if I'll ever use the poles. That's the cat. But it is cool that they sent them to me. I've set the poles up in the tent. It's pretty sweet to have a freestanding version of the duplex. I do think you might maybe get slightly better pitch by not using the poles, but it's obviously a lot harder and a lot more time consuming. Um, but it, I, I do like the fact that you can set this tent up freestanding. Some dislikes I had on the first impression side of it. Honestly, the biggest dislike I have about this tent is it's huge. It does not, cause it's made of Cuban. Like, look at that. I mean, it's huge. It does not pack down that much. So I might consider, uh, I might put this in a stuff sack or not stuff sack, a compression sack. Um, but it takes up way more room than both my hammock and my tarp combined. So I might go to compression sacks with this just to try and get it all the way down. Another, you know, thing I worry about with this tent, much like anything Dyneema, is I, I actually do worry about using it without a ground sheet. I didn't use it with a ground sheet at all in Picture Rocks. Now, in Picture Rocks, we were pitching on effectively like a sand pine straw mixture every night. So you never, you don't even need a ground sheet there. But I would worry on rocks or stuff, just with a Dyneema tent in general, about scratching the bottom of it. So if I were to use this tent for the long term, I will probably invest in some sort of like Tyvek ground sheet or something like that. Let's talk about the rest of the setup. We haven't talked about the sleeping pad. So my, my old go-to sleeping bag was a Thermarest Neo Air. Um, I believe it's a two and a half inch thick pad. I made the decision if I was going back to the ground, I was getting the most luxurious setup that existed. So I literally found the thickest pad I could find, other than some like wonky Big, Ag Big Agnes one that was thicker, I found the um, Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. It's three inches, so it's super thick. I love this sleeping pad. It is insulated, so they say you can take it down to 10 degrees. I obviously haven't tested that, but it's really easy to blow up. It comes with a pump sack. I like the valve setup. It, it, you can use the sack to fill it up and you can without a doubt side sleep on it incredibly comfortably. So I really like that pad. I'm obviously going to use it more before a standalone review, but uh, you know, I've slept three nights on it and it was great. Now the coup de gras of this ground sleeping setup. And honestly, the reason why I think I have slept so well on the ground, especially in picture rocks, I'm using a 12 ounce pillow. <laughs> so shout out to Restless Outdoors. Uh, I saw his pillow at Dolly Saws. I was like, I want that. So I got the uh, the Nemo Philo Elite pillow. I believe that's what it's called. I'll throw the name up on the screen. It is so heavy, but it's like a legitimate sleeping bed pillow. And it is awesome. You know, it takes up almost as much room as my sleeping pad and weighs a little bit less than my sleeping pad. So for a pillow, it's about the heaviest and bulkiest you can get but it is so freaking comfortable. I mean, it's huge. It's like a bedroom pillow. So the Nemo pillow um, coupled with the Nemo Tensor sleeping pad really makes for a heavy, but very luxurious sleeping setup. So I, I was really happy, you know, I, I literally was like, all right, I'm going to the ground. We're making the most comfortable thing we can. I don't care. I don't care if it weighs a little bit more. Um, and given all that, that setup, the duplex, the Nemo pad, the pillow, is still lighter than a hammock setup. That's mainly because the underquilt gouges you with weight. Um, and I have a very lightweight hammock setup, but all that is still lighter than my, um, than my hammock setup. I'm not gonna talk about top quilts. I'm using the same top quilt um, I've used in my hammock. It's a Enlightened Equipment 30 degree top quilt. I will say I, much, I, I don't like top quilts as much on the ground versus in a hammock because I, I get annoyed like when I'm rolling around at night if like a little sliver opens up on my side, which will happen on a sleeping pad. In a hammock, because you're, you're kind of like in that hammock, it, it really doesn't happen. I'm really liking the ground sleeping setup I have right now. It is heavy for a ground setup, but invest in sleep. We always say that. So that's it. That is um, kind of some commentary on the Z-Pax duplex. Why am I sleeping in a duplex? Am I gonna sleep in a duplex in the future? 
Um, I don't know, we're gonna keep playing it out. I, I really am not gonna lie, I had a pretty positive experience in Picture Rocks with this tent and with this setup in general. So uh, for my next multi-night one, I'll probably stick with the tent. However, you know, my last time in the woods I was in a hammock. I'm not done sleeping in hammocks. Uh, I think in the winter I'm gonna stick with hammocks too. I haven't decided yet. Tell me about your tent setups and if there are other, there are other people, and I know they exist, who have dirty little secrets of switching to the ground after being in a hammock, let me know your thoughts.